Welcome, everybody, to the Case Notes from the Field Social Work Podcast. My name is Ernesto Bejarano, and I'm the founder of Social Work Mentor, a tool and platform to provide user-friendly, easily accessible tools and resources to social workers and other helping professionals. On this show, we have conversations with professionals from all different areas of the social work profession. The goal of the show is to learn more about the social work journeys of these individuals, learn about the many different opportunities that the profession offers, and hear a diverse array of perspectives from our colleagues. For social work resources and merch just like this, visit socialworkmentor.com or go to solo.to slash socialworkmentor or check the link in the description of this show. So here we go, my social work people. Enjoy the show. Hey, everybody. Welcome back once again to the Case Notes from the Field Social Work Podcast. I'm super hyped and excited today for our guests. Um, If you've been watching these, you know that the people that I've interviewed so far have been kind of people that I've known local to me and, and I've had a relationship with them. But our guest today is someone that we're just meeting in real life today. We've just kind of known each other digitally a little bit. But it's going to be an interesting conversation because this is an interesting individual and and we've never had any of this conversation before. So that all being said, I would I'm going to go ahead and pass it over to you and let you introduce yourself. Some of you from TikTok may know this gentleman as Mr. Social Worker 12. <laughs> I forget the Instagram handle, but you, you'll notice the face. And when he starts talking, you'll recognize the, the energy. <laughs> I so go ahead and. Uh, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself and let's get started. Absolutely. So first, let me just say thank you so much uh, for this opportunity. I I don't uh, discredit it or discount it at all. Um, as a man of faith, I count it all joy. Um, but I am Felix Moore. Uh, as I like to say, I'm Felix C. Moore, uh, a.k.a. Mr. Social Worker 12. Um, and um, I, again, just excited to be here tonight and look forward to, to the dialogue. All right. Awesome. Awesome. Well, you know, I forgot to tell you this in our little pre-meeting that we just had, but I want to start doing this as part of, part of our show and just, you know, a practice that many of us are familiar with as social workers. So we'll do a little mental health check-in. I think it's important to, uh, you know, check in and and just make sure that we're in a good place as we start Absolutely. things or see where we are. So I'll go ahead and start. Uh, at this time, I'm feeling, as I mentioned in the intro, I'm hyped, but I'm also tired, man. It's been a, it's been a long day. I was in training for a couple of days straight. So, mm. you know, when you come back, that work is, is built up. It's so, there. Yeah. So I'm kind of beat, but I'm also energized, you know, just seeing you and, and being here with you. So that's my mental health check-in. All right. So my check in is um, uh, I like to talk, tell people that I am a social introvert. And so <laughs> I uh, am excited. Um, I uh, transitioned. And so I'm in, in a new sort of arena of social work now. Uh, and so I'm not as stressed uh, as I was coming out of child protective services. And so but today um, I am definitely in a good space. Uh, and 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 feel pretty good today. That's great to hear. I'm glad to hear that. So if you're watching this at home, whenever you're watching, check in with yourself too. And it's always good to be in touch with, you know, how we're feeling. And that being said, we will go ahead and get started now with what you all came here for and, and <laughs> learn learn about, do you prefer Felix or Mr. Moore or what? what do yeah, you Felix is fine. Yep, right. Felix is good. All right, so Felix, um, before we get into the TikTok and all the other stuff, why don't you go ahead and tell us a little bit about just your background? And I know just from what I've seen on TikTok, you, I think, you know, you've you've lived in different regions and maybe worked in different regions, but I don't know. Why don't you go ahead and let absolutely, us know where from? absolutely. So if you can't tell by the accent, I am definitely from the south. Um, I am southern to the core. Uh, I uh, was born and raised in Mississippi. Um, my family actually still lives there. Um, I uh, went to college in Alabama um, and I have worked in mostly, uh, well, all Southern states uh, in my career prior to coming to Colorado where I currently work. Um, and so um, I come from, uh, and, and I'm proud to be, you know, I'm a product of a single parent. Uh, my mom 
um, sent myself and I have an older sister. Uh, she pushed us and sent us off to college uh, and because she wanted more and wanted better for us. Uh, and so um, she pushed us and I went off to college uh, at the University of West Alabama, as you can see in the back. Yeah, Go yeah. Tigers. Uh, I am a proud Tiger fan. I'm a 2005 graduate of the University of West Alabama. Um, so my journey into social work uh uh, actually started when I was a teen, um, something that I uh, definitely am not ashamed of, and I think it has made me who I am. Um, so we grew up um, poor, uh, and I know a lot of people like to say that, um, but, you know, there were just things that we grew up without, um, and and um, and so I just remember one, uh, one event, um, I guess I was about 15 or 16 years old, uh, and I came home from school, we came home from school and our lights were off. Uh, and so I just remember sitting that day in the living room, you know, kind of watching my mom try to figure out how we was gonna make this work, we gotta get some candles and uh, figure out how we are gonna eat that night. Um, mm -hmm. But um, I just remember sitting there saying, I wanna be in a position where I can help families um, that are in situations like this. I mean, we we were we had Medicaid. We were on they call it SNAP now, but it was food stamps back then. Matter of fact, it was the paper food stamps. It wasn't even yep. a card I that they have that. now. Um, and so, uh, but I just remember saying I want to be in a position to help. I didn't know it was social work though. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that's what it was called. Yeah. Um, and so I graduated high school uh, and. Um, Leaving high school, I actually went to community college first, uh, uh, and I actually—I'm so, sorry to interrupt. No, no, you're good. I might interrupt here, but I, I had a question about just in high school. Yeah, because you know, I think a lot of people have go through the experience. A lot of social workers have gone through an experience or an upbringing that you know those struggles sometimes drive, are what drives them into the profession. Absolutely. But as you got closer before you left to college in high school, had, were you able to? identify at that time a little more closely, like, I want to work with people or be a counselor, or, or were you still kind of just unaware? I think by the by the time I got to senior year and was graduating, I, I still hadn't identified it as social work, because I don't know that I really knew that term uh, mm -hmm. per se or what it did, um, but I knew I wanted to be in a position to help. Uh, mm -hmm. And so that's that's kind of what I had on my mind was I, I don't know how I'm going to do this, uh, but I know that this is what I wanted to do. Um, and and I, and I had some great teachers. Um, now, people may not even believe this. I'm going to tell you something that if I didn't tell you, you wouldn't even believe this. Uh, I have a GED. I would so not believe that. People wouldn't even fact, believe I don't know if I believe it. it. Um, so what <laughs> Even as you're telling me, I don't know if I believe drop the mic. Right. So um, believe it or not, I had a learning disability. I, I grew up in a really small town um, and anybody that's watching or that knows anything about small towns. A lot of times things are done underhandedly, for lack of a better term. Yeah. Uh, and my mom was a hard worker, but I had a learning disability. And, and instead of, you know, being offered tutoring and some extra help, um, they tested me to confirm the learning disability. Uh, and at that time, uh, I was placed in special education as opposed to being offered a little bit of help. Right. Uh, and so uh, my mom, bless her heart, was hardworking. She took the word of these professionals. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, and she wanted what was best for her son. And so I ended up and this was part of the re this kind of helped push me into this position, too. Mm -hmm. And so long story short, I ended up spending uh, from sixth grade all the way up to 10th grade in special education. Um, missed a lot of credits. Uh, but when I got to mm -hmm. 10th grade, I told my mom, I said, I got to come out of here because I'm I, I, I'm going to miss something if I don't get out of this. So I tested out. But I had missed so many credits that by the time I got to my senior year, I did not have enough credits to graduate. And so the mm -hmm. only other option was to accept a certificate of completion. Mm -hmm. And I mean, that's I had a some credit for you. 
to, to even have that awareness yeah. in 10th grade. Like, I, I yeah, I, I like something is missing. I, yeah. yeah, something was Amazing. definitely missing. I, I, I just go back and I remember seeing in the clouds like y'all are doing stuff I did in first grade. <laughs> y'all don't know, you know, yeah. <laughs> and that's no dig on mm -hmm. nobody. But that was me in the moment. Recognize I did mm -hmm. not belong here. Mm -hmm. Um, but, um, I had some great teachers, Arlene Brass and Suzette Chun, who I, for the rest of my days will always credit who I am to them, um, mm -hmm. pushed me and said, go get your GED because you're better than this. Mm -hmm. And so I went and earned my GED and, and, um, um, I, I my mom had to act a donkey for me to take my ACT. They didn't <laughs> want to allow me to take the ACT, but she had to act a donkey. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I was able to do that. And that's how I got into college. Wow. That's, I yeah. mean, and it's, I, I know that for, oh, I'm going to make the assumption that for you working with youth and, and, you know, a lot of other uh, families that have similar challenges, mm -hmm. just having gone through that and having that lived experience is, yeah. is, is so helpful. You know, I've, I've had not that story, but similar stories that I've been able to draw upon my own experience to, mm -hmm. to provide those services. And it's not to say, obviously, that if you haven't lived that experience that you right. can still help, but, but it is, you know, there's something to be said for, for that lived experience. So, so now you, um, you know, you went through that. That's an amazing story. And, and your mom <laughs> did what she had. To, everyone yeah. did what they had to do to push Mr. Felix forward. So now <laughs> moving on to the next phase of your, your social work journey. And maybe this is where the, the actual social work part of it starts. Mm -hmm. So, so what happens next in, in your, your path here? So, um, I actually, you know, I went off to college, um, and, uh, another one of those, you wouldn't believe it if I told you. So I didn't even go into social work when I first got to college, uh, went to community college, uh, and I thought I wanted to own a print shop and I wanted wow. to, I want to do graphic art and print stuff. So I mm -hmm. went, I actually have two associate degrees, one in graphic art communication and the other one in marketing management, because <laughs> I wanted to just own a print shop and do graphic art. You had uh, a plan. At least yeah, I had a plan. <laughs> <laughs> and then social work, you know, that's important. You got to have yeah, a plan. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> that's the first part. That's the first part. You got to have a plan. And mm -hmm. so as I graduated with my marketing degree, associates in marketing, um, that little voice reminded me of what I said at 15, 16, that I wanted to be a, in a position to help people. And so as I was graduating, that little voice just got louder and louder and louder. And I said, OK, I got to go back to school. And so I enrolled at the University of West Alabama. And um, um, got a band scholarship, went off to the University of West Alabama, uh, earned my social work degree there. Uh, and so, so then how then, work. okay, so how did you, I guess, between your associate degrees and, mm -hmm. and going on to get your, getting your social work degree, how, when and how did you identify that, okay, Social work is actually the thing that's been that voice in my head all this time. I, once I, I got to the university, um, once I got to the university, I actually had plans to be a teacher mm -hmm. and enrolled in the College of Education. Um, and so as I was my first semester matriculating, you know, through the College of Education, um, uh, that voice, if you will, uh, is the best way I can describe it to say this is not it. It's, mm -hmm. it. it's something else. And so I went and spoke with my academic advisor and kind of explained to him, you know, what it is that I was feeling, what kind of where, where I wanted to go in life. And my academic advisor then enlightened me that, oh, it's social work. And I was like, <laughs> oh, OK, that's yeah. a world. I, you know, I, I didn't even know. I was I like, well, that's what I want to do. <laughs> yeah, once they once they describe it, you're like, oh my god, that's yeah, <laughs> that's what it is. Like, because I, you know, it, it kind of in a similar way. I I initially went off to college. I knew my whole life I that I you know I like being outdoors. I like mm -hmm. nature and all that stuff. And so for sure, I knew I was going to be a wildlife major. I wanted to be like a wildlife biologist or something. So I went <laughs> off to school up in Northern California specifically okay. for that because they had a good wildlife program. And I got there and 
<laughs> it wasn't, I didn't have no voices <laughs> in my head about that. It was not what I wanted. But as, as I was taking some uh, general ed, like mm -hmm. sociology and, and ethnic studies, I was like, oh, this is feeling more like what I want to do. And, mm -hmm. you know, those voices started coming too. And then when I learned about social work, similar to you, that I was like, yeah. oh, this, I actually, I actually though graduated with a sociology degree just because okay. I was already down that path. But mm -hmm. I kind of knew that social work was the, the profession that I wanted to go into. Absolutely. Yeah. So, um, I went in that direction. I, I, I took to it, uh, like water. So to, duck to water, so to speak, uh, had an awesome professor, uh, by the name of Dr. Yvonne Woods. Uh, and I love Dr. Woods because she challenged me. Uh, and as you know, being, you know, a man, you know, mm -hmm. social work and sociology, th that field is not really, uh, field with a lot of us in particular, you know, yeah. men of color, even that, but Dr. Woods, she was an African-American professor and she was tough. She was tough. Uh, and I it went to a small school. And so when you're at a small school, you can really connect with your professors. Mm -hmm. And so she really connected with me at, at least I, I, that's how I felt because she, I had her my entire four years that I was there for various classes. Mm -hmm. And so she was tough and she just pushed me. And she was like, you're going to be the best that come out of here because you're black, you're a man, uh, and, and you got what it takes to make this happen. And so I'm going to push you. And so I, 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 I thank Dr. Yvonne Woods for that. That is awesome. Yeah. Because, you know, a lot of the population that we end up working with, um, you know, is, again, it's not to say that if you don't identify exactly as as someone that you're working with, that you can't serve them. But, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of the young, you know, Latino, African-American mm -hmm. uh, youth or even Vietnamese where I work uh, or I live here, it's a similar socioeconomic cultural yeah. experience. And so to be able to identify that as a man, as mm -hmm. a person of color that's that's working on, you know, your case plan, there's again, there's something to be said for that. And and as you know, and probably people that are watching this know, there's there's a scarcity in most places of, of men and men of color. So so it's it's definitely valuable to to those people that we work with to have that background. Absolutely. And I, I think back uh, when I was in Mississippi, um, I was uh, a social worker for Head Start. And for those of you who don't know what Head Start is, it's basically a preschool for um, people who are at or below the poverty line. Um, and it, it's just, it prepares them for kindergarten and they get all kind of resources. But I was working there for Head Start. Um, and one thing that uh, that struck me and that, and really let me know that I was doing what I am supposed to do was that um, the the ninety nine percent of the student body uh, was African American uh, and then you had you know your African American boys and so it was amazing to them when I walked into the building with my shirt and bow tie on and slacks and they was like wait he's not he works here like. <laughs> he really work here mm -hmm. and and so that amazement on those young men's face and just you know they would come to my office and just you know even though they were you know four and five years old they would just be like mr moore what you doing today you know <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> can i just come to your office and just even the parents was like you know what miss moore i'm so glad that you're here mm -hmm. because my son gets to see something other than what the media portrays. Mm -hmm. And I knew in that moment um, that um, that's that's who I want to advocate for. That's uh -huh. that's the population I wanted to be an advocate for, because, you know, growing up, obviously I had some some good role models in my uncles and, and people in my community and things like that. Um, but I never had a black male teacher. I never had a black male counselor or, or school counselor not even a black coach, you know, mm -hmm. for that matter, when I play sports. And so to be in a position to be that representative. And even when I went into child protective services, um, that was one of the things that um, 
pushed me into more advocacy for black and brown families because we are overrepresented uh, in that system. That's mm -hmm. a whole nother conversation. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> uh, we, yeah. We'll need a part two just for that conversation. Yeah. Hey, right? We might have it too. Right. <laughs> because, it, you know, it, it deserves the conversation. It yeah. deserves. I, I don't know. Those who are in the field, I think, know that. But I don't know just right. how much the general public know right. that and, and if any general public people were to watch this they i think they might be shocked at just how much the the disparity is and yeah and kind of the reasons behind it and the impact of it and all that stuff so so yeah but but um i was gonna say i mean yeah just just that connection that that you're able to have. oh i know what i was gonna say because you mentioned in um child protective services and and the, the as you moved into that area the impact mm -hmm. that you were able to have and when families are in, you know, have gotten themselves or have gotten it for whatever reason into the system, it's a scary thing. It's, I mean, Absolutely. it's there, it's hor it's horribly scary and unknown for most families who don't know the system. So to be able to connect with someone who, who kind of looks like them, mm -hmm. who maybe understands not just from the books, but from that lived experience again, it doesn't solve all the problems, but it, I have found that it sometimes makes it easier for those families to Absolutely. navigate. Did you, did you, or have you found that to be the case? Yeah, I, I definitely found that to be um, one of the biggest things. Um, mm -hmm. So I practice child protective services here in Colorado. Um, in Colorado, uh, in the particular area where I lived and practice, um, there is a, a a small community of African Americans and Africans and Ethiopians, and uh, it's just a a a, um, a, a large uh, demographic, right? And so, but they, we were overrepresented uh, in the system. Um, we, although we had this community, we we were outnumbered by other races, if you will. But ninety percent of the people who were having child protective services cases look like me. Uh, and so to me, that became distressing because I'm trying, you know, because, you know, I, 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 if I can be just be transparent in that moment, in this moment is that, you know, I can remember sitting in meetings, having to explain culture to people with MSWs and, yeah. and, and other advanced degrees. And I'm thinking, Y'all didn't talk about none of this stuff, you know, <laughs> like I shouldn't have to be explaining culture to you. And uh -huh. that became frustrating because that's 90 percent of the, the, the referrals. Um, most of it referred to something that would happen within our culture um, mm -hmm. that, yes, it may look like and sound like abuse, but it's culture. Mm -hmm. Right. And so just yeah. having to explain that and, and even. uh <laughs> I, I've had I had several instances where, you know, I, you know, we have to call the family. Hey, you, you this, I'm calling from so and so county. Mm -hmm. You got this referral, yada, yada, yada. And I literally have had family say, are you black? <laughs> and I would say yes. And they was like, oh, you come to my house right now, you know, because they have been, as you stated earlier, with, with, they're scarred by the system. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and as you know, on my TikTok, um, you you've heard me say, and I will continue to say and advocate this is that the system is broken. The system Absolutely. needs reform. Uh, I will never say that the system is perfect, although I worked in that system. I, it, it's just the truth. Mm -hmm. um, the system is there to help average Joe and average Jane. Um, but the system needs reform because there are families that are truly hurt uh, as a result of uh, the encounters that they have. And so one thing I did as a senior lead person um, when I worked for CPS was just to encourage um, uh, younger workers like, let's look at this from another lens. Yes, we got textbook. And we got, you know, all of this other stuff. Oh, I see my my brother is on. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I got distracted. That's right. uh, but um, um, but we we you know, I wanted them to look at it from a different lens that we got to look at where this family is. You know, if, if mom is is worried how she's going to feed these five children. Some some stuff just got to be common sense, you know, yeah. and, and even, you know, with schools, because I hear our schools were uh, probably 75 percent of the reporting party. 
Mm -hmm. And so something as simple as, you know, Felix got a hole in his shoe. Go to the shoe closet and get the boy a pair of shoes that you got. Don't call us yeah. and make us go interrupt this family. But that's mm -hmm. what happened. And so those yeah. are the things that would frustrate me in the system. And that, those are the things that I advocated for. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you say that. Just, the, um, you know, when we talk about the lens that people that people have to have in, in this kind of work and, you know, sometimes it's through no fault of people of their own. People just haven't mm -hmm. had that perspective. They haven't lived that life. And so, you know, they do their best just as we might not have another person's lens. They sometimes mm -hmm. don't have the lens that we have, but it makes all the difference in the world to to a lot of families because ex the example you gave is perfect that you know their coat maybe is they don't have a mm -hmm. heavy enough coat or they got a hole in their shoe or you know <clears throat> that maybe a couple kids were were home left home while the right went to, the mom went to the grocery store you know just those things that yes you know they're they're things that we might want to provide services for and support mm -hmm. and work with the family but they don't rise to the level of you know, actually bringing kids and families into the system because, as right. we know, once they're in, oh my therein goodness. lies. It, the it's problem. a snowball effect. Yeah, it's a snowball yeah. effect. And so, um, so yeah. But before we continue, uh, I just want to. We have Deidre Lamar who said hello and yeah, that's my brother, that's a very good friend. <laughs> <laughs> Brad, Deidre and Brandon are are here. So, anyone else, if you're watching this live, either on YouTube or Facebook. I didn't know if this was true because I hadn't done this before, but I guess you can submit a comment or question. And, and so if you have a question or we'd, you'd like Felix to address something, you know, maybe we can get to it. And, so you can go ahead and submit that. But um, so getting back to the story. So we kind of got into a whole bunch of stuff, but you got, your, you got into um, you worked at, in Colorado. You did. Mm -hmm. How long did you do? Child Protective Services. Child I did Welfare Child Protective Services for three years. Um, I did it for three years here in Colorado. And sort of my resume is right out of college. Uh, most most new social workers, case workers, uh, whatever, uh, maybe start out at residential. Um, and um, so I started out in residential, worked my way through residential. Um, and, uh, after leaving residential, I went into, um, uh, adult mental health. Um, I also did foster care, uh, case management, um, I, for, for several years, uh, I even taught school for a few years. So um, that teaching plan kind of, it's kinda still, it's way. still, yeah, <laughs> 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 it still kind of came into fruition. I, uh, so I taught school for a few years. Um, and, uh, of course I did, um, social work for Head Start so that I, it's not, they don't really call it school social work, but that's basically what it is. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. and, but working closely with families. Uh, and then I came into, uh, child protective services. Um, mm -hmm. and so, um, I did that for three years. Uh, and as of three weeks, a month ago, um, I transitioned, um, into school social work. Uh, and so, um, I've been doing it now for three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've taken a nice deep breath from child yeah. welfare though. Yeah. Sure. Uh, uh, child welfare can be tough. Um, oh, yeah. um, and as you know, uh, it's one of those, uh, things they tell you on day one, if you make it two years, you could probably go and do anything in life. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. and so, uh, and, and what people don't understand, you know, of course the whole, Y'all still kids that, you know, that's yeah. that that we'll too is to another that. one of those conversations. <laughs> yeah. uh, <laughs> we will get to that. Yeah. Uh, but um, so but just being in a position uh, again, just to help families, I believe in helping families. You know, mm -hmm. I, I think that without the support of a, uh, of a social worker when I was a kid, even though I didn't know that's what it was without that support. I, I really don't know where myself and my sister would be, you know, mm -hmm. today um, without that support. Uh, yes, we had family, but, you know, we also had that government assistance. Uh, we were we you know, uh, my mom was never investigated for child, protect, you know, child abuse and neglect. 
uh, or any of those things. So I wasn't involved in the system that way. But we, you know, we were on Medicaid, we were on food stamps um, um, and, and, and different things like that. Um, a lot of young people don't know what commodities are, but we we went to the armory to pick our commodities <laughs> up <laughs> once a month. <laughs> yeah, I, I you know, it makes me think, too, sometimes, um, you know, for a lot of people that that had a, that kind of background and a similar kind of background, you know, where just resources were were scarce or for whatever mm-hmm. reason, the socioeconomic realities caused, you know, they caused some struggle. And at any given time, you know, some of those people, and I kind of count myself in this group that didn't get brought into the system, you know, Mm -hmm. by any one little report or one little thing, justified or not. Because I think a report on me probably would have been unjustified, but they might have been able to make a case just for reasons of socioeconomic or whatever. And so, um, you know, it's almost like the luck of the draw sometimes that you don't get brought into the system. And and it's you know I sometimes count my well they say count the lucky stars that, that you didn't, <laughs> or whatever Absolutely. reason you didn't get in that yeah. that you know that that's so true it, and I uh, when I would interact and even now as I interact with family still you know I I always like to say you know um, I don't have my glasses on tonight but don't let the glasses and and bow tie fool you I have been here. I've mm. been there. I get it. I understand. And that a part of social work is showing empathy, right? Mm-hmm. That's that's part of what we do. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so just being able to show that empathy and, and have that understanding, you know, every household is not perfect. Right. And, and it probably won't ever. Like I, I tell people, even here in, you know, Colorado, where I live, I've been in million dollar homes and yeah, I've oh been yeah. in, you know, and this is by no disrespect, two dollar homes. Right. Mm-hmm. And so just because you got, you know, a million bucks, that does not uh, excuse abuse and neglect happening in your community. So, mm-hmm. you know, it, it, it crosses all races, all demographics all educational, all socioeconomic lines, abuse and neglect can happen to anybody, anywhere, anytime. And so I think as a social worker, even if there's a young social worker watching me tonight, watching us tonight, just know that, you know, the the community that gets involved is, is, is wide, it's big. And so we talked about those lenses. It's just being able to look at things in a different different lens because of course that million dollar person struggle is different than you know the two dollar person and, and again i mean that in no disrespect mm-hmm. but just showing the difference right. um that but you still got to be able to go in and know that you're there to protect the child uh-huh. at the end of the day i don't care i don't care if it's john elway or if it's you know uh john doe standing in the middle of colfax mm-hmm. you're there to help that child yeah yeah and that's that's the thing that we all you know we always ideally as social workers and child protection so social workers specifically keep that in mind but i you know that's the message that sometimes gets convoluted i think with the public like they mm-hmm. they have other thoughts about what our kind of prime objective is right they don't quite understand that and we'll get into that but i i did want to mention um <clears throat> A couple of things, but one specifically, because you you talked about the young social workers that might be watching this and whether mm-hmm. it's live tonight or later on down the road, they watch this. There's so many lessons that they could pull from your experience. But I think one of them that I identify with, too, is just as you get into this field, the opportunity to kind of do different things and work mm-hmm. in different areas. And so, you know, I, I started also I started in child welfare but I was able to move into a lot of different things, drug and alcohol prevention and uh, monitoring um, monitoring contracts and, and doing some evaluation and a, a whole bunch of different stuff. And it's mm-hmm. all been in social work, but it's just different opportunities. So if you're young in the field or even not necessarily young, just, you know, middle career, or mid career or whatever, the opportunity to do so much with social work is out there, even beyond what I think we traditionally Absolutely. think about in the private sector and in, in the business world. You know, there's just it's almost like you mentioned, whether it's because of your work in child welfare or just the social work skill set in general. We have so much to offer in so many areas that, that it's <laughs> kind of like limitless what, what, 
we as social workers can, can offer. And so, um, <clears throat> so that's, uh, and, you know, it's a good kind of background of you and your social work journey and how you got professionally, personally <clears throat> and professionally to where mm-hmm. you are. But so now let's get into um, kind of the reason why I, I know of <laughs> you and, and know you. Um, and so, you know, I think there's a group of individuals, I count myself as one, you for sure, and, and others on these different social media platforms or wherever that we, you know, we like, we go there to have fun, but mm-hmm. we also go there, I think, to connect, to have, to build community of social workers, and also some of us to try to offer and provide um, either perspective on the work or or tips and tricks or, or answer mm-hmm. questions. And so, in that way, I kind of found you on on TikTok, and that's a place <laughs> two months ago, you know, people might have, or maybe a year ago, people might have said, that's just for kids or yeah. dancing around, and we'll get to that dancing part too. But <laughs> this is, I'm going to, so this is the first time I've tried to do this, but I'm going to see if I could pull it up. We All practiced right. it before this show, but let me see if I can get it. So this is an example of one of the videos, and you have, if you're not on TikTok, I would suggest you go there and follow Mr. Social Worker 12, myself too, if you want to, social yes. work mentor. But we will, let me see if I can get, here we go. All right, <laughs> let me play an example of what brought me to, to Mr. Social Worker 12. This is a first. I've never been called a trafficker before. Girl, don't nobody want them kids. <laughs> now. This is a first. I've never. <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> it sounds like that. Uh, we were able to see that. So <laughs> it's you know the opportunity provides itself here on TikTok and other places to to be real. You know, people want to. Th- I know you'd mention on your TikToks, and I've done it, and a lot of other people. We talk about the flaws of the system. Mm-hmm. We talk about the challenges of disproportionality, and you know all the different bumps in the road that that there are when someone's Absolutely. navigating the system. But we, you do, I think, an excellent job of also kind of calling out the other side of the coin yeah. too, and and that perception that social workers have sometimes. You you kind of put that out there, and 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 put that you know kind of put people to the fire on those assumptions too so that attracted me but t- i don't know if you want to kind of you were on tiktok well Absolutely. before me so how did you how did that come about just you starting on there and developing your what you do on tiktok absolutely so uh as you know the pandemic hit last year literally a year ago uh just a few days ago right and so um my county uh did as so many other counties and and businesses and agencies did they sent everybody home uh and so i was sitting at home uh and i actually had attempted to get on TikTok uh earlier and i just could not figure it out right and so as i was home uh in quarantine uh working from home um i figured it out. And I was like, okay, I'm going to make TikTok. So I just got on. I was like, oh, I'll do some dances or, you know, crack some jokes. And so, um, but then I went back to what I, and I was like, I know social work. And I was like, okay, let's make fun of social work, but in a way where I'm educating as well as entertaining. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so I, I honestly never got on there thinking I would be uh, to the point that someone would be saying, hey, uh, would you like to come on my show uh, <laughs> and talk about this? Right. Uh, I really was doing it because I was home in quarantine um, uh-huh. during this pandemic and we were still working, but I was home. And so I started making videos and they sort of got some traction and people started friending me. And, you know, I remember when I had, you know, a hundred followers. Uh, and then it's like I woke up one day, I had a thousand followers and people started, you know, like, e- you know, sending me DM messages and was like, oh, you helped me today. Or, you know, I appreciate this or, hey, th- my sister has this going on. And so it turned into continuing to kind of talk about what we do as CPS workers, uh, because at the time I was a CPS worker mm-hmm. and then it got into 
okay, what else does social workers do? Because then I started having like students who were either BSW students or MSW students or people, seniors in high school getting ready to go to college. It was like, hey, can you tell me more about this? Uh, and then, of course, people started interacting and, you know, um, I developed I, I would go live and I would do Monday check in and and Friday roundup and, and Thursday, you know, ask a social worker Thursday. Uh, and so that just developed. And, and you know, I think I, I, I don't know, I think I got almost 16 might have 16000 followers now. Mm -hmm. uh, and so people look forward to Thursday, you know, ask a social worker Thursday and. Yeah. Um, maybe about three months ago, I started doing, you know, the mental health break. Uh, and so people on my Instagram page, I think I missed like one day, one week. Uh, and I started getting DM messages on Instagram like, hey, I didn't see a mental yeah. health break. I was like, oh, wait a minute. People are taking this serious. Uh, and so now I have to come up with, you know, those weekly mental health breaks. And so it just really developed um, into something, uh, you know, me being a man of faith, it just, you know, it, it was a God thing, right? It, it, he just, uh, I never realized the amount of people that I would help through my uh, entertainment. And really, it was just me trying to get over being bored during quarantine. Uh, and, and it developed into, into what it is today. Yeah. I mean, obviously, as I mentioned, that's, you know, that's how I found you. And, and, the you know you would think that you know once people sometimes see comments or whatever i think people have an idea that those comments are just going to be just kind of trivial or not yeah. that important but when you go into the comments it really is people even within like you post a video there's mm -hmm. comments and within those comments it's like a community is built yeah. for that particular video and then you post another one and it's a different set of people building community around that topic or whatever and so it's just it's amazing to me it how, really is how these platforms and then you know you once you start having mm -hmm. i had one video so far that had you know i don't know like forty five thousand or something which mm -hmm. for me is huge but when i saw i woke up one morning and i started seeing all these little red signs on my phone i was like man this is there's people that really connect because yeah. they were asking questions and and and, you know, kind of going back and forth with each other and, and supporting each other. So right. it's just amazing what's possible on those platforms. And and like you said, I think your way of doing it is is exactly, you know, what makes it accessible for people. Because, so, you know, some of it is fun. It's, it's a right. nice little dance or it's a, you know, you got a little joke or whatever. <laughs> some of it is really, you know, I know you had during Black History Month, there was a lot mm -hmm. of stuff that really educational and and uh you know it's just the possibilities again are endless and and i think that only is going to continue to grow i mean i see absolutely. in your channel growing, growing. <laughs> absolutely <laughs> and just you know uh, just kind of what we're talking about just building community i was so shocked at the amount of social workers right you know i had after been on a while, I had heard of, you know, teachers of TikTok or educators of TikTok and, and different <laughs> things. And so all of a sudden, here comes the social workers of TikTok and, uh -huh. you know, connecting with, you know, therapists and, and counselors and other CPS workers and other mm -hmm. social workers who have been, you know, able to bring light to what different we do. Because normally when you hear a social worker, people mm -hmm. automatically assume you are child protective services mm -hmm. uh, automatically. I was like, no, that's not all we do. We do more <laughs> than that. <laughs> uh -huh. um, yeah. But uh, just being able to connect with other social workers and building really a strong community. Um, and so, and, and being able to bounce ideas and cause a lot of times I'll post a video and I'll give a response and I'll say, well, hopefully some of my other mm -hmm. social work friends will chime in. And so oh, then yeah. you see people come out of the woodworks like, oh yeah. So in my state, we do this, that, and the yeah. it's so crazy. I've connected with people from the United Kingdom, people from Canada. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, it's just been crazy that, you know, somebody, I listen. So I grew up in this little town called Philadelphia, Mississippi. Most people, if I just say Philadelphia, will automatically assume Pennsylvania. <laughs> automatically. And I was like, not with this accent am I from Pennsylvania, right? <laughs> uh, but I grew up in a little town, Philadelphia, Mississippi. And to know that somebody in Canada 
or in the United Kingdom knows Mr. Social Worker 12 and mm -hmm. and, you know, will send me a DM like, hey, this is, you know, what's going on at my friend's house. You got any advice? You know, just I think yesterday you and I both responded to a video of a young lady who scored an intern that she was excited oh, about. Yeah. And, and who was asking for tips. And so just being able to give that um, mm -hmm. that sort of advice and encouragement uh, and also just be honest, like, hey, this is this work is tough, mm -hmm. uh, but you can do it if this is what you want to do. Yeah. 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 It's, uh, you know, to, to two of your points. Number one, when the social work mentor, some people might be watching this on that page. And so at some point about 10 years ago, I just wanted to create like a, a online resource for social workers to find, you know, resources they could use in the field. And it was mostly meant for like my friends and colleagues where I work. Right. Um, but I put it out there and I kind of didn't even think about it. And then I started looking at my, this little thing that you can see where the pages mm -hmm. or page visits are coming from. And I started seeing people from, like you said, New Zealand and right. Hong Kong <laughs> and all over the world. And I'm like, and they weren't just one vi page. They were like visiting the site. Right. Where, so I was like, man, there, this technology, like there's opportunity <laughs> to help people to connect. Yeah. And then, like you say, on the social media platforms, it's totally like, you know, especially for younger people, you know, that mm -hmm. who have questions or are interested in the field, because that's a problem that, you know, as a profession, we have kind of a attracting people into the field. The pool of social workers is mm -hmm. not necessarily not big enough sometimes no. <laughs> for what the need is. And right. Then keeping them there, kind of building that support so that that we can feel supported and have community to kind of stay in the field because it is very difficult. Absolutely. Um, so yeah. So so the other thing, oh I was gonna say one other thing about TikTok. Um I can't think of it, but you know, the, the, so you and I are, you know, you obviously do your thing and I'm trade, you know, just trying to follow your lead. In, in many ways. But there's also, there's other people that are yeah. kind of bringing their own little flavor to, to the social, to social Absolutely. work TikTok. And one of them, um, uh, her name is Brittany Williams, I think mm -hmm. uh, in two weeks, I believe I'll be interviewing her because she, she has, I had kind of heard of it a little bit before, but not that much, but she does uh, hip hop, social hip hop therapy. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, as I was watching her, she started popping up on my TikTok and it's right. very interesting. And I will you know, we'll be able to hear that perspective. And she's I'm definitely excited about that one. I'll be tuning in for that. Yeah. Yeah, so it's it's just amazing what what we're able to do on these platforms. Um, the other thing I, we kind of covered it already, but I also just did. I was hoping maybe you go a little bit more because not only it's not all you know rainbows and unicorns. Absolutely. You know, it's not all we get. Or you more than I get a few. You I see get a lot of these. You know, individuals from the public who have yeah, they like to come that experience me. with the system, <laughs> you know, with, or they whatever thought they have in their mind of social yeah. work, they kind of put it out there. And that's kind of that one little clip that we showed. So so how have you thought about that? Um, you know, responding to those. And also mm -hmm. we're, you know, professionally, we have jobs that we also right. need to maintain a level of of um you know professionalism or or, right. or some level of boundary you know because our our jobs may or may not be supportive of of what we do so how have you kind of navigated through that so it, <laughs> it has definitely been a thin line um of course when i first started um really tiktok was doing quarantine that's is that's when tiktok really blew up uh and so it was really easy to go viral uh, and so at that time, you know, I really didn't know how to control who saw what and what went where. But um, um, I actually had an incident where I was, you know, called in um, um, and um, sort of reprimanded, if you will, um, by some of my, one of my earlier videos um, that actually I had to delete uh, as a condition of employment. Uh, and so it's been a thin line. Um, but so when, when what I like to do is I, I want to make sure that I respond to people. I don't I don't really want people to to have an assumption. 
um, because we all know what happens when you make assumptions. <laughs> and so I want to be able to give an answer, but I also want to uh, it, it, sort of like the the old Mary Poppins song, a spoonful of sugar helps mm -hmm. the medicine goes go down. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I want to be respectful and I, I want to validate what they feel. Uh, and that's something that, you know, I will always do through my social media platform uh, as Mr. Social Worker is to validate. I, I understand and I, I empathize uh, with how you're feeling. But I also want you to know the truth. I want you to know that we don't steal children. I want you to know that there has to be a court order in order for these things to happen. Or I want you to know, you know, that there are resources available if you want them. Right. And so. Um, I just want to give that little bit of spoonful of sugar for the medicine. Uh, mm. And so just walking that thin line of maintaining professionalism, uh, but at the same time, just kind of being who I am uh, mm. and, and, and keeping my uh, originality, if you will. Mm. And so I would I would even say to the to the younger uh, social work TikTokers that may watch uh, and may post a video. Yeah, it, there's a thin line. Be who you are, but also know, you know, know your companies social media policy. Um, thankfully, you know, I didn't violate any social media policies uh, with my stint, but it was more so of just the perception. Mm -hmm. uh, and so just being able to understand and knowing what that is. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm going to give you a response. You may not necessarily like my answer, uh, but just like I said in the video, don't nobody want your kids. Uh, <laughs> we don't want them. We, I mean, we ain't got no, you know, you. Really, I mean, that's a good thing, right? Like, yeah. it, it sounds funny, and, and it, you know, it is funny, and and we thank you, or I thank you as a child welfare <laughs> social worker. But it, it's that's a good thing, right? We don't want your kids mm -mm. in the system. We want you we them don't. to be with you where they belong. Absolutely. We, uh, Absolutely, we want you to be able to provide provide them with the safety and well being that they deserve. So it's said. Like exactly like you're saying, a spoonful of sugar, you know, it's it's funny and it's entertaining, mm -hmm. but it's true. And in a in a good way, it's you know, the message behind it that I take is that, you know, this is this is about you making sure yeah. that you're able to keep your kids with you. It's not that we don't want them, it's that right. we want them with you. I mean, we don't want them. Too, <laughs> right. <so. laughs> and, you know, and a lot of times, you know, <clears throat> you know, it just talking about comments, they'll make a statement and it's like, wait, you can't be telling us the whole story because that's not ad adding up because, you know, if you know yeah. policy and procedure, you know, like these things are adding up. You're me. leaving something out. <laughs> and so I'm that guy to point it out like, mm, no, that don't sound like the whole story. Uh -huh. So let's talk a little bit more about it. Mm -hmm. But I also want to be able to, you know, just to provide, I talk a lot about self-care, you know, in my videos and that's important as uh, I think in any profession, but certainly those that are in child protective service, social work period. Um, I had a conversation with a friend just a week ago uh, and talk about so many times we as social workers have to validate other people's feelings and there are just days we want to be validated. And so uh, just being able to be in that position to 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 validate how somebody feel, but to also educate them at the same time. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah. And I, um, the point that you made about knowing the social media policy and and knowing that like that's super important, again, especially for or I guess not especially for but for anybody who's doing social media and it's you know, around the profession, around social work, you do want to be careful um, because, you know, it's it's the profession or many organizations that I've seen are kind of behind mm -hmm. on their policies. Like they may not even have a policy in place. Right. And so it could be kind of subject subjective and they might kind of call you out on something that you were never given that expectation up front. Yeah. So you do want to be careful with that, but also, you know, be yourself and be genuine because for me, you know, if I was the head of an organization or whatever, I see people like yourself and others as kind of ambassadors to the profession. Like we're, we're out there making it real making it mm -hmm. tangible and, and not kind of demystifying it both for Absolutely. the public and for potential future colleagues or current colleagues. And so, so, you know, it's a, it's kind of a gray area right now, but yeah. I, as long as you're careful, as long as you're responsible, as long as you maintain, you know, going by the code of ethics, NASW mm -hmm. code of ethics, if we follow those things pretty closely, we'll, 
I think we'll be all right. And and there's absolutely so much potential when we do that. Um, now, and the other thing about self care, I think, is that's a huge thing that we're that social workers, I think, have been able to. You know, it's a buzzword. I think yeah. a lot of times in organizations, yeah. like here's a PowerPoint, <laughs> here's a webinar. Okay, self care is covered. Check the box. Boom. But really, yeah, yeah it, I've seen that we on these platforms are kind of able to be more uh, specific, more genuine about what does it really look like? What is self care? Let's call it out first of all. Call mm-hmm. out those those discrepancies and what an organization is saying about self care and what it really looks like. But let's also, you know, provide different, um, you know, provide support to each other about how we can really implement some self care right. uh, strategies in, into our lives and into our professions. And, and I can guarantee you, without it, you will burn out in this profession oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. without self care. And I think self and, and self awareness. Um, mm-hmm. Uh, it, it, it go, I think goes hand in hand with self-care and, and, and knowing when you're at a point. So, you know, we talked about this early, you know, I transit, I've transitioned from child protective services. Uh, and that was because I was able to recognize that I, I, I was there. Um, Mm -hmm. I had physically started to get sick. Uh, and so it was just time to bow out. Um, Mm -hmm. um, and and it's hard, Uh, uh, you know, I've talked to many, uh, child protective social workers who have been able to transition from the field, from that particular field, one of the hardest things to do is to walk away from your families. Uh, mm-hmm. As many mm-hmm. jokes as we crack or whatever, our families mean everything to us uh, mm-hmm. because they're there for a reason, right? And so a lot of times we will guilt ourselves uh, into staying and we become more bitter and more uh angry. Uh, We, you know, and that leads to you forgetting things that leads to you really making some mistakes that could cost a life, you know, period. Um, I I used to tell people all the time, I make life and death decisions every day, you Mm -hmm. know, and so um, you want to make sure that you put yourself in the best possible position um, Mm -hmm. to be successful. Um, That's whether you're working at a nursing home, whether you're at the hospital, or at the school, and, and like as you say, social we social workers can get a job anywhere. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. We can get a job really anywhere can. because we're needed. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, but also, again, just knowing, just having some self awareness as well as knowing your self care, and, and that's some advice that I always give. Uh, even on TikTok, people say, "Well, what are some advice?" I'm going into the field. First, know who you are. Know your biases. Know the things that make you tick. Right. Uh, know the things that um, that you feel some type of way about, as as you know the young people say today. Um, and also know what self care looks like. Know how to say no, <laughs> and know how to separate work from your. Um, personal life. So all those things are just key. I think in any profession, but we're talking about social work. So those things are paramount in what we do. Yeah. And, you know, in, in a lot of the, the social workers that I've talked to, you know, that are mostly the ones that are kind of up and coming, a challenge that they have always expressed to me is just how to prioritize the, the things that come at them. Cause you, you know, you sit in there, you're, you know, writing a court report, you got to put in some contact notes. And then here comes, you know, you got that red light flashing on your phone. <laughs> right. You know, what's, you know what's there. And then here comes your supervisor. They need to meet with you. And, and it's just a never ending flood of things coming your way. And not all of them, in my experience, are either A, a crisis or urgent or be your responsibility. And so I'm actually right now developing a, a course that kind of okay. will provide, um, you know, some tools hopefully to help social workers do that. But like you said, unless you develop these strategies for survival, whether it's being intentional about your self care and, and intentionally uh, scheduling it and setting aside time, or whether it's developing a system to prioritize all the stuff that comes at you. If you don't do that and you just kind of go where the wind takes you, you can really You'll burn out quickly. Burn. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So that's uh, important. So I want to, um, we've been going for about an hour. I know we have a whole bunch of stuff that we, we haven't, 
we haven't really gotten too much into men in social work. Oh, absolutely. Work. That, you There's know, so that's much. a part two. Uh, obviously, we can talk about it, but just being <laughs> a man in just uh, uh, one thing I have found, uh, I, and I think I maybe like tapped on it just a little bit, being a man in this profession um, has its challenges. Uh, and then you add being a man of color um, has its challenges. I, I'll, I can be honest and transparent in this moment. Uh, in my last position, I was um, I was the angry black man. Um, and, and it wasn't that I was angry. Uh, I just believe in advocating. I believe in expressing myself. Um, because, you know, uh, I think it's another important thing, just knowing, you know, about yourself. So I, I have been diagnosed with general anxiety. So I, I have an official diagnosis. And so it didn't really take a whole lot for that to kick in. Right. For those who know anything about anxiety. And so for me, one, one thing that I've learned to control that is that to be able to express myself, uh, and that helps me not become anxious if I'm able to to verbalize uh, what I'm feeling in that moment. And so, you know, it was easy to be the angry black man because I was literally the only black man, you know, out of, you know, 80 caseworkers. Uh, and so uh, my advocating um, was known to be complaining, you know, but I really that's was so just advocating, you know, and so um, uh, that that's a challenge. We we are in a female dominated field. And so we have to we have to even walk a thin line. And and what people don't understand is sometimes it was like you're in my situation where I was literally the on, well, I wasn't the only man, but I was the only black man. Um, there were two other two other guys, uh, but we were so spread out. Right. And so you don't have that show that person to talk to. You don't have that outlet um, um, to kind of express how you feel that day. Uh, and so we're supposed to always be strong. We're supposed to always be on. Um, but we have our own struggles. Uh, and so and a lot of times just even the frustration of, you know, being the only black man. A lot of times my you know colleagues will come to me and say, oh, Felix, can you come talk to this teen? Can you come talk to this? You know, they would be a family of color or a person of color. And I was like, wait, we all got the same degree. <laughs> you supposed to know how to talk to these people, too. Uh, <laughs> but. Um, you know, and that, that like I said, I we're mean, just, on the flip side. Do you take them with you when you go see families that? that look like no, no, uh -uh. <laughs> no. You know, none, none of my coworkers was there. You know, in the house where I was called, you know, called racial slurs or uh -huh. you know, the door slammed in my face because this six feet tall, you know, two hundred and eighty pound black man was knocking on their door. I, mm -hmm. you know, um, uh, doing uh, the George Floyd. Um, 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 portion of our lives, um, um, you know, we had, you know, some of our upper management and others, you know, sent out uh, statements, if you will. And, you know, you know, I had co you know, offer, oh, you know, I'll ride with you if there's ever this and it's ever that. And I'm thinking, what? I, I don't know. I don't want to get it to all that. Yeah, that's, for part, that's for part two also. We'll that's save part two, we'll but, save you know, it, it, it's a struggle. Uh, being a man of color, and again, you would know this, um, mm -hmm. but just being a man and being a man of color uh, in this field, a lot of times we're looked over. Um, uh, I, I, I don't have a problem saying, you know, I attempted to get into upper management several times over the last uh, three years once I became eligible uh, because there was an eligibility period uh, and I never broke that ceiling never got through that. And that was frustrating mm -hmm. to me. Uh, yeah. And and so those are things that even for the men of color uh, that may watch this video at some point, watch this show at some point, that's just things you have to consider if this is what you choose to do in life. Yeah. I think that's, you know, that it's a heavy load to carry just a male yeah. in social work and, and a, man, a man of color in social work. And, you know, I think that, as we're talking about this, I'm, I mean, this is like another show or, at least, <laughs> you know, a support group or something because right. these experiences, we don't, there's not really space in, at least, you know, my professional experience, there hasn't often been space for us to come together. And we've mm -hmm. kind of created our own little social, social coffee groups or whatever of a couple of guys that might go mm -hmm. and, and have some conversation, but it's not, it's not institutionalized. And therefore right. we're, 
we're carrying this. And and I actually made a back to TikTok. I made a TikTok recently um, because this is how it kind of manifests itself in real life sometimes is that, you know, I sometimes as male social workers, if we're alone, maybe transporting a female client or, yep. or something like we're, that's, we're a, that's a challenge in it of itself. Yeah, we have to be yeah. very careful and, and <laughs> make sure that, you know, everything is nice and clean because we don't want right. any misunderstandings between what we may say or how we yep. may act. And, and so that's that's clear and that's a challenge in and of itself. But so I was at my my daughter's um, softball practice, just watching practice and and, you know, all girls school. All, mm -hmm. Obviously, there's a girls team. So it was all um, girls on the softball team. And there was a woman parked next to me. And she I, I'm I'm quite sure that she wasn't thinking anything about this. But I in my mind, yeah. felt. I, I can't be looking at these all girls on this team. Right. That I'm, you know, I'm have inappropriate thoughts or something. It's mm -hmm. just, it's like zooming back out. It doesn't seem very realistic, but it, it is kind of that almost like a PTSD or some level Absolutely. of trauma having to always be careful as a male social worker and then worrying about what the perception is of you when yeah. you're just out in the real world doing normal stuff. Absolutely. So um, I, I think about, you know, the time, you know, of course, you know, in our profession, we're required, well, at least here in Colorado, we're, you know, we were required to speak with children alone away from parents. Yeah. Uh, and, I, and a lot of times I couldn't do that. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times I didn't yeah. do it uh, because, it, you know, the child would be, a, you know, a female child or even a, a young child could be a young male child. Mm -hmm. And I would always ask the school social worker or or if they, hey, are you OK with your mom or dad or big brother being in the room? Um, mm -hmm. Because we those are things we have to think about. Right. Yeah. Because all it takes is that one time. Right. Mm -hmm. um, for something to be misconstrued, a statement or a, a pat on the shoulder. You yeah. know, even when it comes to our colleagues, you know, a pat on the shoulder or uh, mm -hmm. just whatever the case may be. And so, you know, we we have those struggles as men in the profession. Uh, and, and I would hope and I would definitely like to see, you know, more intentional uh, training or intentional uh, addressing, uh, you know, that particular issue, because I mean, we're here and we're here to stay. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, I, you know, I feel like sometimes it's kind of perceived as kind of diminishing or minimizing the, you know, the work and, and the value and importance yeah. of our female colleagues, but, you know, in no way, shape or form, is that where I'm coming from? I, right. I, you know, to, to think about or advocate for or express some of these things as a male social worker is just, that's just what it is. It's just this experience. It's not to in any way to be compared to or, or diminish the Absolutely. equally important and, and, you know, difficult challenges that female social workers have. And so, I, I mean, this is ripe for another. I, it's just good to be able to talk to another man that's in the profession. Let me just say that. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Yep, a hundred percent for sure. Um, so yeah, so I, I, I want to touch on so much other stuff. The the point you made about you know being passed over and and, and trying to move up and and a lot of stuff, but I do want to be respectful of time and. And make sure that we ha we we leave enough for a potential episode Absolutely. two down the road. So um, so before we kind of cut it off here, I wanted to make sure I give you an opportunity to to share any kind of last thoughts you want to share, or anything you're working on, or any uh, websites or or you know thing you'd like people to to check you out on. Absolutely. So again, let me just say thank you. Right. I am so appreciative. Uh, and this is one of those moments that I wish my um, hmm, I'm going to try not to. I, this is one of those moments I wish my mom was here to see, um, because these are the things that she wished and prayed uh, for the type of success. Right. And so um, I am just thankful for that. Uh, I just uh, listen, follow me on TikTok at Mr. Social Worker 12. Uh, I promise you will be entertained and educated. You can also follow me on Instagram at Blue Soul 12. 
B-L-U-S-O-U-L and the number 12. You can find me there on Instagram uh, as well. I'm so excited. Uh, uh, you can also purchase Mr. Social Worker 12 gear uh, on Amazon. Uh, com or Amazon merch. Um, I have some t-shirts there. Uh, I'm working on some new t-shirts. I actually have one of my shirts on tonight uh, that it will be available nice. on um, on Amazon uh, really, really soon. Uh, and so uh, you can check me out on Amazon and, and again, purchase Mr. Social Worker 12 gear uh, there. Uh, they will actually ship it straight to your house. Uh, and so if you got Prime, you can get it in two days or a day, depending on where you live at. Uh, and so I'm excited about that. Um, future wise or future forward. Um, I'm looking forward to uh, more engagement with my com TikTok community, uh, and and we'll just kind of see where Mr. Social Worker Twelve goes from here. <laughs> yeah, it's, I mean, I know I'll be there following along, and, and I want to, <laughs> you know, also just you know pay be. Res I want to put out my respect to your mom too, or wherever she may be. You know, she's obviously has did her work to create a, you know a fine, a fine man and, and a, a real man that's, that's here making a difference in the world in many different ways. So, so thank your mom and thank you for, for being on this show as uh, my brother, my, my, my Absolutely. fellow male man of color, social worker. Um, I'll put, you know, after this show, after we wrap up here, you can send me the links and I'll attach them to Absolutely. this video for anything you want. Um, or you could go to socialworkmentor.com or the other links for my stuff and I'll be connecting with um, with Felix's stuff as well. So thank you again, Mr. Social Worker 12, Felix, for, <laughs> for coming on for episode one or, or chapter one. Here <laughs> right. with you. And, uh, um, you know, as I mentioned, in the next couple of weeks, we'll have Miss Brittany Williams coming on to talk about hip hop therapy and a number of other stuff. She's also on TikTok. So mm -hmm. thank you everyone for watching or listening if you're on the podcast version. And I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Thanks everyone and, and Bye, everybody. have a good one. Bye-bye. Let me make sure we get out of here in the right way and we'll see you next time.